I'm dead certain that this episode of Super Sicento is going to be sound. Hello you lot, Miller Corner here and welcome back to Super Sicento. and that's right the year where this little beast will be built into the best Sicento in the UK is underway. There are some huge plans for the car this year and I can't wait to get started on them. But first a little bit of clarity about that statement. In my 2019 plans video I said that I wanted to make my Sicento into the best in the country. This caused a bit of confusion on the internet with people asking what do you mean by the best? Do you mean the fastest? Do you mean the most expensive? Do you mean the best show car? What do you actually mean by the best? I'm not looking to be better than anyone or their car. All I'm saying is I want to build my Sicento to an incredibly high standard throughout to make it a fantastic quality car and exactly what I envision it to be with no corners cut and no compromises made. And when people discuss the best Sicento in the country, I want this one to at least be in the discussion. In short, I want people to say, yep, that is a Super Sicento. But with that said, on with the show. Now the first mod of the Super Sicento for this year is going in the interior. Perhaps the most unpleasant thing about this space at the moment is something that you can't even actually see and that is the droniness, the noise. When I went to Poland last year I did around about a thousand miles on the autobahns at about 70, 80, 90 miles an hour with a near constant <laughs> It wears you out. Everyone loves a nice noisy exhaust, but when you've got to live with it day to day and when you've got to drive for long distances at high speeds with a constant three to 4,000 RPM drone in the background, it's not fun. So to that end, I have invested in this. Now this is what's called Dodo Dead Mat. It's a brand name, but basically what it is, is sound deadening and it's sound insulation in a way. Basically, these are self-adhesive pads that go over the floor pan of the car. They go on all the bare metal to deaden the sound down. It blocks out some of the rattles, it blocks out some of the vibrations, and it makes things a little bit less hollow and unpleasant sounding. I'm well aware this isn't gonna completely solve the problem. It's no way gonna turn this little 90s Fiat into a Rolls Royce race. But if I can make it a bit smoother, a bit more refined, a bit quieter, and just a little bit easier on the ears and the head, I will be very, very happy. I bought 30 square feet of this stuff, and it was around 35 quid for the pack. I am going to put a lot of these in to try and deaden the sound down and make the Super Sicento a nicer place to be on long journeys. Now, in the standard back seat of a Sicento, if you pull the uh, back seat base forward, you don't get much in terms of insulation. That's carpet. And this is very thin, very flimsy, and a bit manky. I only put it back in when I reassembled the interior during the rebuild because it's something. But with 15 or 16 years of people's bottoms on it, it's not much. What we've got underneath it is a very humpy floor pad. You can kind of do a bit of that and go over there. So I don't think it's gonna be the hardest thing in the world to make this fit on. Now, when you're putting anything that's adhesive on, you do want to make sure the surface is clean. It doesn't have to be spotless. Just enough that the adhesive pad isn't going to struggle to adhese. Now, it's not that warm today. It's about 6, 7 degrees Celsius, which isn't that cold. I have got a hoodie on, but it's uh, the actual metal isn't warm. And anything adhesive is going to struggle to stick to a surface that's very, very cold. So, I've got my lovely hairdryer. If you want to stay looking this good, ladies, you've got to have one of these babies. Now, what I'm going to do is turn the heat up, and I'm going to warm up the floor so that it's kind of easier to stick the sound deadening pad onto it and then warm up the pad itself because then I can kind of fold it around, make it conform and work out if I need to cut it, where I can fold it and how best to stick it to the floor. Now, you'll probably appreciate this is loud. So this next bit of me warming up the floor, you guessed it, is a time lapse. And there we go. So the floor is not hot, but it's definitely warm now. It's definitely got a bit more nice warmth in it than it did before I used a hairdryer. Next up, we need to see how well our lovely sand deadening mat conforms. I'm quite good there. I can kind of fold to that curve. But this little bit here ain't going to be quite so happy about that. This little notch in the floor pan. So I think we're going to warm up our sand deadening pad, see how well we can make it conform and go from there. Ah. 
I'm going to point out now you could use a heat gun for this, but if you haven't got one, a hairdryer that actually gets hot as opposed to just warm will work just as well. So on there, we can now see with a bit of heat in it, this thing conforms really nicely. You can probably see how soft it is now, but there is a little bit just there. It's not going to fit over that lump quite so well. So I reckon what we do is get it chopped. Okay, so we've got our sand ending pad and we've got the little crease there where I've managed to kind of mold into it where it's going to hit that little indentation thing in the floor. Now I've got a blade here, I can't believe they trusted me with this, cut into the pad here. The idea being if we can cut it to form around that dent in the floor, we can shape it a bit easier. And as if by magic, it blooming fits, lads. Oh yes, conforming and everything. So give it a little bit more warmth just to make sure that we can mold it as best as possible. And then I think we can start whacking this baby down. I can already imagine how much better it's going to be with that in this just feels like it's going to work floor is warm the pad is warm now we can start actually sticking it down so we peel off the sticky backing that comes with this which is actually surprisingly tough to get off and then just just run along with it so the further you go along just peel more and make sure you're smoothing it down because if there's loads of bubbles in it and loads of gaps in it it's just going to act like a big drum or trampoline and if anything your sound's probably going to be worse than it was when you started and because it's warm a bit because the floor pan's nice and warm we can make it conform quite nicely. Now you only really get one shot with this, so try and do it right the first time if you can, while it's still warm at least, because the warmer it is, the easier it's gonna to be to conform to the shape of your car. I think that has actually come out pretty damn well. Now it might not look it on camera, but the thing is, don't forget, this is not something anyone's ever gonna see. This isn't meant to be pretty. Function over form, which is what I've always said, that's our first bit done, I reckon. We've got a bit more of floor pan to cover, as you can see. To summarize, warm up the floor pan, warm up the pad, see how it conforms, cut it to shape where needed, over things in the floor pan like these little notches then gradually peel the backing off warm it up a bit more to make sure it conforms peel the backing off gradually smooth it along make sure there's no air in it if possible to avoid any trampolines slash drum skins slash bits that make noise not good gradually press it on and what you'll end up with hopefully is a car that sounds less annoying on long journeys now i'm going to do hopefully some very impressive shots of the next bit being done uh, don't hold me to that And that is one from start to finish. So there we go. That sort of triangular square silver metal plate you can see there, that's how you get to the fuel tank. That's how you get to your fuel pump and all that kind of stuff. With anything you do to your car, it's best to make sure that if you need to get to any other bits of your car to work on, modify, upgrade, any of that in the future, make sure it's usable. Do it at the time, because you'll hate yourself for it if you don't. I've cut this out so we can still get this protective plate off. We can still get to the fuel tank, to the fuel pump, to all that stuff. If, I mean, sorry, when this thing is making more power and needs a bigger fuel pump. You've kind of seen how I've done it with these two. You know what you need to do. So now I think you should see what it looks like when it's done. Ready? Three, two, one. Okay, update. We are not far off done. We'll show you this properly in a minute, but for now, this bit here needs to be done and the carpet is here and the carpet is being held on by the brackets that hold the seat in place. So the plan is we is going to take the seats out. And when the seats is out, brother, there is no stopping us. Am I, am I gangster yet? Am I, am I gangster? Let me know in the comments. All going well. Yes, rear seats are gone. The audio companions are back. Yeah, baby. Told you these would come in handy for more than just prying stuff apart and breaking things to take these clips out. If I choose the right one, we might actually be there. I just got a text message. I don't know if you heard that vibration, but I think I just got a text. Probably your mum calling again. There we go. And that's got that outlook, which I wouldn't have been able to do with my raw hands and a screwdriver probably would have broken it. Audio companions, ladies and gentlemen, get some in your life for like no money. So yep, yeah, now those are all undone. We can pull this bit of carpet back. We're gonna cover all this bit here in lovely, lovely sound deadening. You end up with all these little overhangy bits and these are really good for doing weird little shapes and weird little areas. You can kind of cut them down and pick bits off to go around weird shapes like seat belt mounts and curves in the floor for the wheel arches and stuff like that. These really, really useful. So don't just chuck off your little off cuts. It's easy to go very gung ho and just go, let's just cover all of it, all of the sound insulation, all of it. But it's worth bearing in mind, you do still need to get to things. Like for example, we said earlier, the big panel here that covers the access to the fuel tank. Similarly with this bit here, what's missing? Can you work it out? Can you work out what you would have covered if you weren't paying attention? That's right. It would have been the bolt hole for the bracket that actually holds the rear seat in. Just cut a little flap in there, which I'm going to cut out, so I can still get a good size space in there for the rear seat bracket. Worth bearing in mind, it's got to be function as well as 
function, I suppose. So there we have it then. The back end of the Super Sacento is pretty much done. All the sound deadening, all the insulation is now on. And I'm actually pretty damn proud of this. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to make a big difference to how quiet and frankly how bearable this thing is to drive long distance and or a high speed. To get to everything in the front, we've got to pull seats out, centre console out, these bits of plastic out, and of course the carpet out to then get to the bare metal to do everything down here that we just did over there. First job is going to be seats, I think, because these things are absolutely absolutely huge and they are getting in the way big time. Now you've watched me bolt up and unbolt seats in this car enough times already by now so I think we're going to make it really easy on you and we're going to remove them with the cool YouTuber clicky snappy thing. So three, two, one. And just like that, the seats are out and it's another day. Now it didn't actually take me over a day to get these seats out because even I'm not quite that useless. It was getting way too dark and to be honest with you, way too cold to be outside spannering on this thing. So I left everything as it was, drove it around for a day with just this in the back because race car and now the seats are out. So next step, we're gonna take some various things out to get the carpet out to do sound deadening under here. So first up, center console. And those of you wanting to take your center console on a Sacento, I can tell you exactly how to do it. Screw under here, take your ashtray, out a couple of screws in there there's a screw under there and then the whole thing should just lift out when you unplug your sleeper dash cap join me when i've done that and i've now done all of that so seats are out center consoles out side trims are out kick plates are out and seat belts have been unbolted and i've got a text message that'll be your mum again now we are pretty much ready to pull the carpet out so we're going to have the carpet out in three two one and we are now done. You may note we have no carpet anymore. We do still have a driver's seat though. Reason being, I'm not stupid. I'm well aware I'm not going to be able to do all of this in the time it's going to take me between now and when I have to go to work. So I've put the driver's seat back in so that when I've done as far as I can before I have to go to work, I can just jump in, go and carry on the next day because you should never underestimate how long it's going to take to do anything on your project car. Worth bearing in mind two things I didn't mention just now. You do have to undo the seat belt bolts like you can see there to pull the carpet out. There is a little screwy plasticky thing holding the carpet into the driver's footwell so you undo that but it all comes out jobs are good and we do have more of this kind of padding cushiony stuff it's not great it's not very thick it's not very kind of insulative and it's a bit haggard after 15 16 years on the road and the ones in the front of the footwells obviously your feet go here all the whole time and squash here which means i've just pulled this one up and it's basically disintegrated but obviously we've got bare metal under there or we will have once i've cleared all this out and it means i can then put some proper brand new sound denning in it like we've got up here we're going to clean this up i'm going to wipe it down hoover it up to make it as clean as possible then we're going to get on with sound deadening this now the first half of that is going to be quite boring it's just me cleaning and wiping so the next thing you're going to see is a really cool montage hopefully of me sound deadening this bit so um yeah cue the montage And with that, we are done. One completely sound deadened interior in the Super Sacento. It's taken me around four days to do it completely, but to be fair, that is doing it around work, around picking my brother up from school, and loads of other day-to-day -day errands that just make project car completion just that little bit more slow and difficult. It should only take around a day and a half, two complete days to strip, sound deaden, and completely refit your interior, entirely assuming life doesn't get in the way. That said though, this isn't a difficult job to do. Pull your interior out, make sure the surface is clean and easy to stick the pads to, and get sticking and cutting. It's actually quite a fun thing to do if you're a bit OCD like me and you like to make sure that everything is exactly neat and covered and organised because you can go mental, cutting everything to shape and making sure it fits perfectly. It remains to be seen quite how good at sound deadening and insulation this is, but of course you and I will find out very soon when I refit the interior and start driving the car around. Between now and then though, get subscribed and hit the bell icon so you're notified when the next Super Sacento video comes out. There is so much to come for this car this year. I can't wait to start building my dream Sacento and to make this one one of the best in the country. But for now, thanks very much for watching everybody and have a brilliant rest of your day. Catch you soon and have a good one.